Hi everyone, welcome to the official YouTube channel of 180 Degrees Consulting, Sri Ram College of Commerce. So in this video, we'll be covering a very important topic of guesstimates, which is not only important for your case interviews, but in general life. Um, so the flow of the session is going to be as follows. First, we'll be covering the importance of guesstimates. Then we'll be giving you the general solution of the guesstimate. Then we'll be solving a guesstimate with you. And lastly, we'll be sharing some tips and tricks in solving a guesstimate. Hi, Kavya. Uh, so I'm planning to start a shoe retail business in Delhi. But for that, I need to know which is the most popular brand of shoes among teenagers nowadays. Hi, Ananya. A lot of sneakers are popular these days uh, from brands like Nike, Reebok, Adidas. But one of the most popular shoes right now are the Air Jordans. Um, so for me to know the number of Jordans that I should have in my store at a particular point of time, how should I go about it? Ananya, that, there's a very simple way of doing that. That is through a guesstimate. A guesstimate is basically an estimate based on a mixture of guesswork and calculation. It essentially requires a combination of logical thinking, problem solving and analytical skills. It is important for any consultant to know what a guesstimate is and how to solve it properly. This is because of two reasons. First of all, for entering the corporate world, a guesstimate provides a perfect opportunity for an interviewer to judge the ability of the interviewee in different segments. And once you're in the corporate, it allows um, a consulting or a consultant to judge and analyze the possible outcomes of the initiative taken by them and change the strategies. Now I'll be explaining the general solution of a normal guesstimate. The first step of any guesstimate is to clarify, that is, asking preliminary questions and taking out the scope out of a problem. For example, if I needed to find out the number of phones that are in Delhi, then I could ask preliminary questions like, are we considering phones that are on display in stores like Chroma? The second is to find out the different approaches, that is, the demand side or the supply side approach. The third is to apply certain parameters and filters to the guesstimate. For example, the urban rural divide or the age divide. The next is to estimate. This is taking data sets and assigning them numbers and use the right assumptions. The last step is to do a sanity check. This is if you've used the demand side approach, you could use the supply side approach and then match your answers. It doesn't have to be equal, but a close estimate could tell you that you've used the right approach and could lead to quick verification. Now, we'll be solving a simple guesstimate. For this purpose, I'll be the interviewer and Ananya will be my interviewee. Hi, Ananya. I would like, to I would like you to estimate the number of CCTV cameras in banks in Delhi. Hi, Kavya. Um, so firstly, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, are we going to consider ATMs to be a part of the banks? No, uh, here you can just assume that ATMs are not considered. All right. I would like to ask if we can consider the private and the public banks to be the same category of banks. Yes. So firstly, I would uh, take the population of Delhi, which is three crores. Then I will apply the age filter. I will consider the above 18 year old population uh, because I assume that this is the population that will actually have accounts with the banks. No doubt that the population below 18 also have accounts with banks, but mostly they're joint with their parents or guardians. So that is why I'll consider the above 18 years population, which is 80% and comes out to be two crores 40 lakhs. Um, then I'll be applying the income filter uh, so firstly, I would like to ask Kavya, uh, is my approach correct till now? Yeah, this sounds fair. You can go ahead. All right. Uh, so for, then I'll apply the um, income filter, uh, considering high income to be 20%, upper middle to be 40%, and lower middle 25%, and the BPL category to be 15%. Then I will consider the percentage of population with the bank to be 100% for high income, 90% uh, for the upper middle, uh, lower middle uh, for the lower middle category, I'll consider 70%. And for the BPL category, I'll consider 50%. Uh, the numbers come out to be for the high income, 48 lakhs, upper middle, 86 lakhs, 40,000, lower middle, 42 lakhs, and the BPL category, 18 lakhs. So the total number of bank accounts is 2 crores.
that seems fair then i consider the average number of accounts held in a bank in delhi to be 5000 is that all right yes that's fine uh so to arrive at the total number of banks in delhi i'll divide the total number of bank accounts with the average number of bank accounts held in a bank which comes out to be 4000 so the total number of banks is 4000 in delhi uh then we'll divide them on the basis of small medium or large banks um so 10% i'll consider to be small banks uh 70% for medium banks and 20% for the large banks that's all right we right. can move ahead then i'll consider the average number of cctv cameras in small banks to be 5 uh in medium banks to be 10 and in large banks to be 15 so after multiplying 5 by 400 Uh, I have two thousand CCTV cameras for small banks. Similarly, for the medium banks, I have twenty-eight thousand, and for large banks, I have twelve thousand CCTV cameras. So the total number of CCTV cameras comes out to be forty-two thousand. That's a good assumption. So here, Ananya solved the simple guesstimate of estimating the number of CCTV cameras in banks in Delhi. I'll now be summarizing the guesstimate. The first step that she took was to gain clarity. Here she asked two preliminary questions: Are we considering ATMs as well as banks? And the second was: Can we consider public and private banks to be one category? The second step was to find out the approach. She could have taken two approaches: the demand side approach, where she could have found out the number of bank accounts opened by people, and the second was the supply side approach, where she could have found out the number of banks that is that are situated in geographical areas of Delhi. Ananya took the demand side approach. The third was applying filters. The possible filters that she could have used was income, age, etc. And now she had to find out the order of these filters. She first used the age filter and then the income filter. The fourth was to use data of population and segregation and then make the correct assumption, an estimation. The fifth was to check. So she could have run a sanity check by using the supply side approach. from step 2 and if the answer did not match she could have checked her assumptions again here is a guesstimate cheat sheet which you can refer to while solving a guesstimate obviously you need to remember these basic values which are percentages uh, of literacy and age groups and mobile phone penetrations and so on which is very important to solve any guesstimate uh, and uh, to get accurate information these are the resources which you can refer to um thank you all for your attention uh, i would urge you all to write to us through our social media handles and check out our wide range of guesstimates in our case library and resources section on our website uh, you can also check out other resources like revenue models industry reports and so on the links will be attached in the description